Hello guys, thank you for patiently waiting for us here. We are live into the second game between Cloud9 Eclipse and Mouse in day two of the US Challenger Series 20. It is semi-finals, best of three. And as you can see, we are into the picks and ban stress. How is it going, buddy? It's going good now. I'm actually glad we had a, lo a little bit of extra time <laughs> there in between the games because, uh, yeah, that was uh, a pretty fast-paced game. So I had to uh, get everything back on track. So... Evelyn has been banned out. I, I wonder why they've done that. Coup, last game. Uh, ended up, I think, somewhere around the 10 and 8 mark on Evelyn. So a lot of kills went over to Coup. Alongside that, Lulu banned out. Not going to be played in that middle lane. Kha'Zix as well being banned, like the first game, alongside Renekton. Yep, Kha'Zix, uh, really no-brainer as in terms of banning. We've seen him pretty much dominant in the jungle and over the last few days and weeks so Evelyn banned as well as you say Ku was a very tanky scary Evelyn in the front lines chasing players down and something we didn't mention in the in the previous game too often is their mobility was massive they had three or four ways of speeding up Evelyn so that Ku could get close to the comp and try and rip the opposition to shreds yeah it's kind of a funny thing that the mobility meant that the, the pace of the game was so fast that it ended up that Really, we should have talked about the mobility more, but there was just so much going on that uh, yeah. wasn't too possible. Interestingly, Mao's feel like Jax right now is a strong enough pick from Cloud9 that they want that off the table. Gragas as well getting banned out by Cloud9, so maybe LeBlanc is going to be picked up here because Gragas typically is one of the lanes that you see go up against LeBlanc, and maybe Cloud9 were banking that Mao's wouldn't look to take that first. Yeah, definitely, but it's still got number 35 seconds to decide if they are going to lock this one in or change their uh, opinion, but they have locked it in, so first pick LeBlanc in mid, that is a bit scary because there's so many champions that could be picked against you now. Yeah, it, it is. It's, I always say that I feel like it's a message of intent that you feel like you're going to crush that mid lane, and uh, it doesn't always end up that way either. There's uh, champions like Zed can still do fairly well, or Riven. Uh, maybe we'll see out of Forbidden because we saw that yesterday and he did a pretty good job up against the talent from Reason Gaming. Looks like they're going to be settled on that rise, which we've seen in the top lane the past couple of days has done very well. However, Maus playing it in the last game dropped a kill very early on in the game and from there kind of traded back and forth on the kills. So maybe this time without that high scaling Jax alongside might be able to do a little bit better of a job. Yeah, so it's uh, going to be another 10 seconds to see if Evelyn does lock it in. In fact, maybe opting for the Nidalee instead. And then it's going to be very interesting to see how Maus are going to bounce back from this one. So clearly feeling that the range and the poke is a bit more useful against the LeBlanc. I guess picking a Riven against LeBlanc is, is kind of a war of attrition in lane. Because you have no range, LeBlanc can just fire in pop off a few abilities and then just pop back again and as a Riven you can't really do much to combat that. I, th I feel like Nidalee is just a way safer pick yeah, in this exactly. situation as, as you're alluding to. is like You're not playing that game of I'm going to get more fed than you and whoever ends up more fed ends up winning the game. But uh, reminder guys we are on 4.4 so we're on the live server. The Cassidin adjustments have gone through because I'm not quite sure whether it's uh, you know, a, a buff or a nerf yet. Some people say buff, some people say nerf. Haven't seen it in enough games yet to really, really tell uh, the, the difference. The same with Elise, actually. Elise got heavily adjusted in the patch. Uh, the stun duration got reduced, which is one of the reasons why you're not seeing it picked up uh, yet. That's a Syndra. What? Well, um, that uh, it could be a placeholder. Okay, uh, yeah, I was about to say that Morgana, Syndra, and LeBlanc all locked in suggests a placeholder somewhere because LeBlanc has been played as support before. It's not completely unheard of. Morgana obviously is is starting to really come to fruition as a support, and Libic is their support player, so I assume that's going to be more bot lane. So, I guess they could go for a Syndra top to combat rise. Maybe they feel that's a pretty good uh, counter pick. I would be, again, it's like last game, I, I think this would be a, a lot you know, more active of a game. We'll, we'll see where that goes, uh, but Ku, of course, being Ku, is going to lock in that Lee Sin uh, for himself in the jungle, and we wait Mouse's choice for the jungles. Hopefully we'll get a message about that uh, potential placeholder. Yep, um, obviously, Ruben, if you do hear something, give us a shout, but other than that, you are Lucian Q on Lee Sin, you know, no no big deal there, as you'd expect. And he could be going for a Vi. I said if you hear anything about the placeholder, give us a shout. 
I, this, but the this way producer they, might. The way they're going through this is is that it's not a placeholder because Syndra's a champion that is played from time to time. So yep. it's not like picking a Heimerdinger. Uh, so I don't know. It, it's one of those things that we'll see as it keeps going. I'm, I'd be more uh, happy to see a Siva here than the Graves alongside that uh, Morgana. And that leaves us. Where does it leave us? Support on the side of Cloud Nine. It's going to be a nanny. I'm, I'm trying to rack my brains around if this isn't a placeholder, who's playing top, who's playing mid. I assume it's it's because Kubon is the top lane right now, and he has LeBlanc, so he'd be going LeBlanc top against Ryze. But surely, as a LeBlanc, if you distort in and get rune prisoned, you're going to eat all the damage before you can dash back again. So, to me, that sounds like a bit of a brutal lane matchup. It's something that I haven't seen specifically in the Ryze top lane. Now, I'm remembering back, I kind of want to say that it was... Fnatic. I, I've just picked an EU LCS team and kind of gone, oh, they've played AP top. No, I, I feel like Fnatic at one point ran uh, LeBlanc in the top lane, if I'm remembering back to somewhere around week three, week four of LCS. This was right in their time where they ended up going 0-8 in a row, I think it was, or 0-7. So I feel like it wouldn't be the first time it's been done, but Syndra top would definitely be the first time I've seen that in a, in quite a while. Yeah, because I was talking before about, you know, Kubon's their top laner, he's picked the, the LeBlanc, it did switch over. So yeah. um, it does seem that we're going to have Kubon against Odomino top. Of course, that is unless they go for a lane switch and they maybe send Annie to, uh, Lucian to top lane. But this is a very interesting comp again. And if game one was intense, I can see this going just the same way. I'm already confused as we head into game number two. But, uh, well, we've got a couple of minutes as we head towards a break. Make sure you check out our friends over at Esports Venture. Click the link under the video player here on the Twitch page. Go visit the Esports Venture site. Sign up and get yourself betting on some LCS matches, as well as the semifinals and grand finals here of the European Challenger Series. We'll be back with game number two of our semifinal number one between Maus and Cloud9 in just a few minutes.
Hello guys watching here at KS TV. We are live into game number two between Mouse and Cloud9 Eclipse. I'm Vince Mattisill, joined by James Stress O'Leary. And as you can see on your screen right now, Mouse again going for a pretty aggressive level one push. They are, and I'm, I'm actually quite happy to see this. There's a lot to talk about again in this game, and uh, I'm pretty happy about this. We'll get to that in a second, because Mao's really are pushing in deep here, and this is something we've not seen. And of course, now, we didn't get the uh, the chance to mention it in the last game, and unfortunately was one of the bits that we missed over, was the trinkets have been adjusted now. So trinkets now can't be placed until, I believe it's uh, 1 minute 50 into the game. Uh, I will have to double check that exact number as today is the first day of it actually going through, but it leads to these more aggressive situations, so uh, apologies we didn't pick that up in the first game. Yeah, well you just saw there though that Cloud9 know exactly what's happening because Forbiven actually typed in chat, sneaky invaders. So they know <laughs> what the deal is and uh, Miles will be backing away as a result. In fact, three of them are still clumped around the blue buff. They need to be a bit careful, they don't get encircled around. Libic and Makla going down to bot lane, dark binding has landed onto Hyanen, who's going to answer back with a piercing light. There's Voidal with the, uh, the Pyromania and Incinerate to stun Makler away. Still doing quite a bit of damage though to Libic. Hyanen's taking a bit in return. Dark binding has landed and my goodness, level one action again. Both teams want blood. Yeah, it's actually the two minute mark that uh, the trinkets become active. So there we go, trinkets are available. I, I couldn't remember whether it was 120 or uh, 1 minute 50, but it's, it's 120 seconds. So we're going to see these more aggressive openings uh, in the gameplay come into it. And I'm glad that we're seeing them out of Maus as well, because they need to establish some control in this game and already a lot of trading in the bottom lane. Voidal does eat an Egg Knight and a Dark Binding, but Makla was too busy trading with Hyanen to really pounce on top of that one. Another thing as well, unless I'm missing something, Stress, no trinket on LeBlanc here. Take Fun has not picked up a trinket. So that's also the same on my screen, so I'm assuming it's not a spectator bug. Uh, there's no, Unless something else was added, to me there's no advantage, but Hyanen's caught. He has been caught, Barrier has came out flashing away, here comes the flash in from Mackler as well. It's probably going to signify his end, in fact, no it will not, as a barrier was popped as well. It's a beautiful play coming in from the bot lane for Mouse. And that's the kind of aggression that they needed. They needed to start that from moment one, and my game's actually lagging, so hopefully it's not a server issue. Mine's froze as well. Ah, uh, that could be problematic. Has yours froze, Ruben? Yeah, we've all frozen on hmm. the client here. Um... Oh god, EUS please. <laughs> <laughs> we had some issues yesterday. Uh, apparently, Steam was having some issues before and they may be linked. So if they are, we could be in a... Yeah, Lucian's moving but everyone else is frozen. Yeah, so. uh, typically that happens when you rally uh, to lane and then yeah. the server lags. Is that it completes the action from the rally and then everybody just stands still. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I think, well, I mean, yesterday we had a bit of an issue in Champion Select where it restarted fairly quickly. Uh, maybe if we stay in game, it'll uh, it'll reactivate. Because, unfortunately, we're actually at a very significant point of the game where <laughs> first contact has already been made and there's a kill on the board. So we're going to have to figure this out here. So uh, bear with us a minute. First contact made. Do you think it's aliens that are DDoSing the EU West? Okay. Oh my god. Right. So, spectator mode has crashed on us. I'm going to see if we can get back into it. Um, I'm going to try reconnecting. So, hopefully this will be okay. The joys of casting and if from we live do have to, If we do have to restart, it would be pretty disappointing because I was looking forward to this game. I have to say, though, that I am loading back in I after am pressing well. reconnect, so Same. that could be a good sign. It's whether the players are still lagging or not. Maybe the players are lagging, maybe it's just a client issue, a spectator issue, and they're still going along with the game. So if we've missed a couple of minutes, guys, we do apologize, but I mean, there's, there's literally nothing we can do about this. Okay, we're back in, and it's working. So... We're just going to give you snapshots if it keeps happening. <laughs> we'll just keep doing this <laughs> until we can bring you the complete game. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened in the last couple of uh, minutes when it disconnected. So, no further kills. Uh, still only that slight lead in favor of Mouse. So, thankfully, we were not too bad. But here comes a gank. 
Uh, Mackler has been caught from Koo. He will be taken down with that red buff. Libic could actually be falling as well. He's got quite a chunk of health remaining. Are they going to go deep for this one? Lands the Q is going to probably be connected in dots. In fact, he's going to go down double kill and loses his red buff. That is a, a nice dark binding landing there from Morgana. At that point, Koo was in the stage where it was, does he want that kill more, or the double kill more than the death to uh, the support would actually give away? And the answer to that for him is yes. So uh, he picks up a double kill there, gets himself the sight stone and the double long sword. So now he's going to have a lot of damage in these ganks. He certainly is. Um, whereas look at the flip side. Vi has uh, yet to go back, yet to pick up any items, yet to really gank as well. So that is going to be a big discrepancy in the items, I have to say here. Uh, stress, if they do bump head to head, you would expect Q to come out ahead pretty significantly. Yeah, that, that would be the case. There's something I really quickly want to bring up is in this top lane matchup, Syndra versus Ryze, we're reaching the point where this lane will become effective for Maus. Ryze typically takes a lot longer into the game to become effective. Kuvan, however, hovering around the last experience parts of level 5. As soon as he hits level 6, Odo Amna, if he wants to farm, is going to be forced into range for Kuban to ultimate him, and we all know that Syndra's level 6 burst is some of the highest in the game, so farming actually becomes fairly difficult for Oduame, and smartly he's letting this push in towards him. He knows the lane, he's playing it safe. Yep, sometimes the best way of playing is safe until you feel like the power curve is hitting and you can start to really threaten the opposition. There's no point giving away needless deaths. Whereas Ku is coming around to bottom again, so he's obviously felt like there is an Achilles heel down here. Flash down on both Libic and Makla could definitely be a big determining factor for his decision, but he's just actually going to recall instead, or maybe not going to come in. Yeah, I, I think he's just kind of waiting for that opportune moment, as Ku always does. And sometimes just likes to try and force his own. He's walking over a ward here, so uh, Maus are going to be very aware of this. And uh, Vi is up in the top lane as well, so no counter gank going to be available. But they do know where Vi is, because she was just walking over that top lane ward. Javelin lands from Feverven onto Vi, but again, it's early levels, not going to be packing a big punch as of yet. Ku is actually going to be invading onto the red buff of Vi. Vi in turn is actually going to be warding away the red buff herself, but Ku's picked up the red, and they very well way very may well is what I was looking for, stress. You know, English is a pretty big prerequisite for casting. Apparently I can't nail that one. I thought he may go down to bot lane instead he's going towards mid. It's okay, man. Don't worry about it. It's uh, not that big a factor, but who is <laughs> heading into this middle lane has the red buff from the steel. Doesn't quite get the Q, so uh, Take Fun will get away from that one. Yep, he is going to be okay for now, although Take Fun is taking quite a bit more damage from Ku. Here comes right from the side. Q did miss from Ku, and that was very, very important. At the end, LeBlanc will pick up that kill. Dukes around from the side. Here comes Yusson Bastry from Makate. Can Fibbervan manage to take down Take Fun, or is he going to be able to survive this one? The answer is a resounding no. Barry was popped as well. Fibbervan will heal himself back up. Flash out from Makate, who signifies the last hit will take down Nidalee. Two for one trade overall, and I kind of feel like Ku is playing this very aggressive playstyle again. And we've got the uh, on my screen, we've got once again a oh bit of a disconnect. Man. So uh, looks like I'm I'm gonna quit this out and get back into Same. spectator mode with a, a reset just as quick as we possibly can. But going back to Ku's playstyle, uh, you know, some junglers at that point once they missed that Q would have finished the gank, but they saw LeBlanc come back in and. They thought, oh, we can get a Tempest down on it, we can cripple, we can try and get the kill. And then from there, the counter gank comes in. They end up trading uh, one for two overall. And I feel like Ku does so much to get kills that sometimes it gives away a lot of deaths. We saw that in the last game and it didn't affect Cloud9 too much, but it leads to this very scrappy style of play. It does. I'm on the loading screen. Um... Oh. We've loaded into the same uh, snapshot of bot lane just kind of standing there. Oh, that's not a good sign. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I, I hope the chat <laughs> didn't hear that, Ruben. I really do. <laughs> uh, producer uh, making noises to, uh, you know, describe the servers right now. It's a pretty apt description, to be fair, the noise he made. 
Um, we'll we'll leave that to your imagination as the audience to to figure out what that might be. But as you say, stress, I have loaded back into the game, and it's exactly the same place where we left off. So yeah. this is not looking too great, to be fair, right now. I assume the players were all right though, because they were playing on from last time, so it could just be a spectator issue. Yeah, that would be uh, a, a little annoying, but at least it wouldn't affect the uh, the game that much. As in, uh, obviously, it affects our our yeah, cast, but not on but... their end. Yeah. So they will be able to finish this best of three more than likely, even if we aren't able to spectate it. We'd love to be able to bring you this game, guys, um, but unfortunately right now we're not able to do so. I'm going to quit out again and see if I can reload. Same. I'm going to try that. It looks like the first game was so uh, fast-paced that it actually blew the servers. So, <laughs> you know, the servers me. are just completely blown up. Yeah, they have definitely been blew away. Blown Blew away. away. Again, English. By that English. Someone even yeah. asked me in chat, like, what's the nationality of this caster? Because my English is so bad. I guess I could say Finnish. It's and okay, might... though, because you sound so much like Joe that you can just get away with it. True, I can say this is Joe Miller, and, like, no one would blame me then. Okay, interestingly enough, I've jumped into a different point in the game here. Um, and the game is actually paused right now. So, to bring you guys up to speed of where the game is... Uh, Syndra has picked up a kill. It looks like on Rise, because there's a kill on Syndra and a death on Rise, which, you know, maths. I I'm, I'm, hope I'm not extrapolating that too badly. But the game is paused, and Makate is asking Ready, and it looks like they're unpausing the game. Right, okay. Um, just a quick check, because I always get a bit paranoid about this stuff. You're on 26, 28 on the pause screen. I'm actually on a, the game will resume in one second and then a disconnect of everything else that's happening. Yeah, that's so. why I asked, because I've had this issue before. And even though it seems like the players are ready to unpause, I'm, what the hell? Yeah, um, this is... Okay. EUS, you, please. Yeah. Uh, our right now our casting is is about as good as the servers are. So apologies that we can't bring you insightful play by play of the loading situation. But oh, I am this, into the game. This it one is frame working. is moving to that other frame. Um, yeah, yeah, it's moving I'm... for me now as well. Okay, so it looks like we're all in game and we're all up to uh, the current time. So currently, Maus have themselves a slight lead of about seven hundred gold. Uh, they've got a kill onto Syndra. And, in fact, a kill onto every member of their team. We missed quite a bit, then. I think when we left, it was, what, 2-2? Two, two? I, uh, yeah. I think it was a, a little bit more than that, maybe maybe another kill. But we have missed it a little bit. Apologies that we haven't been able to bring you in, but there's a dive in top. Kubon will be going down. Question is, will Odama? No, he will not. Tower is not quite strong enough to secure that kill. And my cat is slightly out of position. He will not be down at the right time. Now he's actually going to be going one-on-one -on -one with Ku. Ku is pretty big right now at this stage of the game, so I'm not sure Makate wants this point. In fact, he's coming out ahead. Assault and Battery comes out as well, but Ku will secure the kill. 1v1. Very close to death, though, and moves himself to three kills and two assists. Oh, here comes Take Fun. He is, and that is going to be one kill picked up for him, but he's not able to connect the dots and take down Rise as well. And this is a really nice rotation out from Cloud9. They're going to push down this middle lane turret. I, they should be able to get this very low, at least, if not take it down. They've only got two minions left, and Libic is here, so it's not going to be a complete turret. But that gets taken very low, which is a very nice rotation, with all things considered. Yep, trying to make the most of a situation right now. Okay, and it's still lurking in the mid lane because Febbervent and Hyanan are both here. So I'm trying to keep this wave from pushing too aggressively in the tower afterwards. But Libic is now going to come around from the side, lands a dark binding onto Hyanan. So Sibir this whole time, Akla's been able to get some free farm at bot lane. He's been able to push this tower as well. In fact, it could very well be going down. They're just about going to be able to save it, which, uh, you know, will go a fair way for Cloud9's mentality right now that, yay, they saved a turret, but uh, a turret on 69 health isn't exactly uh, the most difficult thing to deal with in about 30 seconds to a minute's time, unless cloud Nine shove and push down the turret on their own, so really, that's going to fall pretty quickly as soon as they're uh, in a situation to get in front of it. 
Yep, yeah, uh, you can see right now that Hyanan and Voidal, they're, they're trying their best to push this lane because they realize their tower is very, very low. 69 HP remaining to be exact. So they're trying to push this lane as hard as possible, but in doing so, that could potentially open up some ganks for Vi to come down to bot lane. I'm not too sure if that's going to happen though, because Vi seems more uh, kind of happy around just getting some farm in the jungle and trying to get stronger for later stages. In fact, that being said, starting to move down towards golems. With Bivin uh, taking a lot of damage from Take Fun in that middle lane, and the similar affair up in that top lane is that Kuban is zoning Odo Amne out. He's playing so aggressive that Ku is given these opportunities. Yep, Kuban taking a lot of damage, a lot of punishment, but Odomini will also be falling, so it does manage to pick up a kill on that 1v2. Again, pretty brave play from him. And as I said, so much shoving in that top lane that it's an easy gank for Ku, but the burst damage of Syndra is so much at level 6 that Arise cannot survive that, even though they kick the back into the turret. Might have even went against them. Flash is forced out in the bottom lane. Dark, ba Dark Binding has landed. There's the Assault and Battery as well from Akase. Barrier has been burnt from Kianan, but it's not going to be quite enough to keep him alive in this situation. And after picking up that kill, they may very well try and rotate to take the Dragon as well. They will, and once that dragon is down, that's only a matter of time for the turret. All that Siva has to do is actually shove this wave in. That wave should be big enough here to take that turret with ease. Yep, so could very well land the 1-2 combination here on tower and dragon. There we go. Has just been signified. So a big swing of gold in favor for Maus as you do see Take Fun going hard. Trying to get some damage down to Febben. Doesn't want to overextend here because Ku was waiting in the wings. Once again, though, we're seeing a very even game. Uh, the gold lead really is just that dragon and the tower uh, that have gone in favor of Maus, but they look like they wanted to take even more here with another quick rotation over to the middle lane. That is going to be another tower falling in favor of Maus, and Cloud9 have got to start doing something. They at least need to get more farm on to Rise here and try and give him a little bit of time to get into this game. Yeah, Rise is starting to look a bit bare right now. Rod of Age is a pretty big item, Tier of the Goddess, 277 out of 750 stacks, so he's uh, still a bit bare on that as well. So we were talking before about how big Rise gets into the later stage of the game. Still needs farm though, Stress. Not going to be able to go there without any farm. Yeah, that's one of the uh, interesting things about Rai's top is... Uh, you don't want to let him sit in the lane all on his own and just get farm. Uh, it's one of the most difficult things to do is to actually pressure out that rise, but it's something that Syndra's going to do for the early game very well, and then start to struggle with later and later. So they actually need somebody that's going to be able to go up against this rise once he has the Seraph's Embrace, once he has those tank items to survive through the damage, because as soon as they reach that point, uh, Rise will be very difficult to deal with with this composition. The only person they've really got that could do that is a uh, Deathfire Grasp LeBlanc, and even then, they need LeBlanc in the fights to really deal a lot of damage. Yeah, and then you may even see Rise starting to build something like a Banshee's Veil, which is going to work quite nice with his spells, but also block away some of those abilities coming from LeBlanc. I mean, Banshee's Veil is a, a pretty core item against LeBlancs, to be fair, so. Even then, it's going to be quite difficult. Lubick has been caught from Ku. He's going to look on the AD carry instead. On the hunt was used as well. Resonating Strike Sonic Wave combo lands. But the flash out from Makla. Pretty nice play from Cloud9. They do burn a couple summoners. And that was a really nice timed flash from Makla. I don't know whether uh, it was quite caught, but it looked like Ku was actually going to kick flash, which you can do with Lee Sin. But right at the last second, Makla flashed out of the animation and was able to avoid it. So nothing went on cooldown for Ku, but Makla got away. He did indeed. Makla is now going to get caught this time around. And without the flash, there is no escape from that situation. Tower is going to get picked up as well from Cloud9. So they are pushing aggressively as a four man unit right now. In fact, two of them are going to go ahead and recall instead, realizing the push really probably isn't on for too much longer. The problem is that Rise in that top lane isn't able to defend this push out of Kubon and Makata. That's going to be another turret falling in favor of Mao is now three turrets up to two. But again, Cloud9 managed to close a lot of that gold lead that uh, Mao has had in that previous engagement. It's a case now of Cloud9 just need to keep Rise farming, keep him in this game, but he's going to overstay. Well, he is, but this is very deep from a cat, and you can already see Kumon's like, see you later, mate, I'm out of here. I'm not following you underneath that tower. And that was a flash from Adomne underneath Yarn and Ku, 
pretty significant plays there. So ultimate was pop from Makate, and Kubon has to run on back to his tower. Yeah, Makata a little bit greedy on that one. Thought that that was an easy kill, but uh, it looks like we might be having a couple of little technical issues for a second, so we'll try and stay with you for uh, as long as we can bring you this game. Unfortunately, we have had a couple of uh, little situations. Well, Hyun was picked up at top. Now, Libic is the next player to take some damage from Ku. And uh, interestingly enough, it, I'm not personally having lag issues. Um, are you stressed? No, it looks like we're okay, but Mackler isn't okay. He's getting <laughs> shredded down. There's, uh, there's a rise for you. You know, we're talking about farm. Kills will also do it for rise. He, he's not too fast, and he's picked up two in the last few moments with that tower dive from um, Makate, and now the kill on Makla. So this is probably going to give Cloud9 the go-ahead to try and push top lane. It is a three versus three, and that is a Cinder as well. They can engage from pretty long range. Makate coming in, cancelling out the safe gun, I believe that was. Soul Shackles as well is coming out from Libic. They're going to stun both Ku and also Libic, and they pick up two quick fire kills. And now all that remains of this top push is Febevent, and he's getting chased down from Take Fun. Take Fun has a needlessly large run. He's going to do quite a bit of damage, but he actually misses his chain. So that's a pretty big, important uh, ability, not utilized to its fullest extent. It is. Two kills go over to uh, Maus, and I was thinking if they can hold on to the culling to push this wave back, uh, the wave, uh, the tower pushing potential here, if they stay alive, uh, is actually not that great for Maus if Cloud9 can stay alive at this turret. But the culling was used to uh, chip the members of Maus down pretty low, and all that meanwhile. Ryze was getting free farm in the bottom lane. He's forced to rotate though because of Sivir pushing into mid, but we saw what just happened to Sivir when she took on Ryze. If she doesn't get out of there, it's going to happen again. Yeah, getting brutalized. The spell shield comes out. Maclery is going to be falling. And it was actually Nidalee that picked up that kill. So they are managing to disperse these kills pretty nicely. Nidalee only has an Athenes and Holy Grail. Must be sat on a... Yeah, okay, I was going to say must be sat on Water Gold. 2.5k to be exact. And that's one of the things about Nidalee right now is Forbidden hadn't, hasn't needed to go back yet. Uh, just because of the way that he's been playing the defensive, uh, has been clearing waves out, holding the turret in top lane, which didn't end up falling. And Take One goes aggressive, but straight into a rise. <laughs> That was a very long range spell flux there from Ryze. I'm not sure if you caught that. Yeah, I did I did indeed catch that. <laughs> that was uh yeah. Not sure that distorting into a Rise with Rune Prison available is the best thing to do 1v3, but nevertheless Maus felt like that was the right play. Yeah, long range ball there from Ryze just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And Omni and Hyana now gonna try and pick up this dragon. I say try, it's pretty much a guaranteed dragon. No one is even remotely close from Mouse to steal this one away. There we go. We're we'll picking that one up with ease. Febevent nearly catches a dark binding for his troubles, but Lubick is uh, probably gonna have to play it a bit safer. Yeah, you uh could really expect a uh, Dunk Master Rise skin coming out because that was pretty much a three point hoop on that one, which is, <laughs> you know, it, sports references aren't exactly my forte, but, you know, I can, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take that. I'll take it. It was an easy setup. It was. It was a setup, also a pun. Because that's I know. also a basketball. See, I was term. going for it. This like, guy is on, on fire. Hey, Watch they out, break. My puns exactly. are nowhere near as good, but... Stress coming to an LCS studio near you. <laughs> 2K14. The oh, dunk Meister rise would be good, but Voidal as... I don't know, that was pretty dunk worthy as well from Take Fun. Absolutely obliterating Voidal before he could even move. It looks like we're having just a couple of issues with the, uh, the syncing on the server that uh, hopefully will be resolved, but... Uh... Unfortunately, it's not something on our end that uh, we are all that in control of because we are fixing it every time it happens. But uh, it's just a case of the servers are a little bit out of sync right now for us. So hopefully it's not too affecting things too much. Oh, Febevent gets crushed again from Take Fun. Not quite enough damage. Culling through as well from Kianen. Looking to turn on Libic. Libic will be falling down. Ku also eats an Ignite through his troubles. Take Fun fires out. The chains does land on Kianen, which will keep him at bay. Meanwhile, Adomne is tanking up three players by himself. Assault and Battery in Makla is the only player who catches the Tibbers, but that's a pretty important target. So he's forced to turn tail and run away. Such a staggered engage here with seemingly all ten players running at different uh, targets. And two players will be falling down both from Maus. In fact, it could be more than that. Make that three from Maus as Tank Fun went a bit too greedy and doesn't pick up any kills in return. 
And one of the most important things to note is that Ryze now has that Spirit Visage. She's only just finished that off uh, about a minute or so ago. So uh, that's the point where he can actually survive so much of this damage that's going to come from Maus. You look at Sindri, you look at LeBlanc, and Morgana are all going to be dealing AP. Ryze can just stand there and take that now. He's going to be able to life seal back using his ultimate and the increased healing from the Spirit Visage and output a lot of damage on all of the members of Maus. And that's what we've seen in that fight. He's now at 5 and 2, and that's difficult to deal with for Maus. Well, it seems like Maus are all about the coordination because identical builds coming out for Syndra and LeBlanc as well, apart from the, uh, the home guarded boots of Syndra. So, looking to, to basically go the same route, which is quite interesting, honestly. The difficulty I have with this Maru's composition is that with the double AP, uh, this is something that we actually saw a lot when Fnatic were trying to run it, is you run out of frontline. Uh, Libic is going to get a little bit tanky uh, with just the way that Morgana kind of ends up, with the way you itemize her as well, but for the most part, it's only Vi that's going to be able to tank a lot of damage, and when Vi is diving in deep, she gets a lot of damage focused onto her until the rest of the backline start to jump into the fight. So she's been forced into building Locket of the Iron Solari to allow the rest of the team to have a bit more survivability, which in turn makes her slightly less tanky as well than if she were building uh, something perhaps that was more like a, uh, you know, a, a Randuin's or a big tank item because she wants uh, the aura of the magic resist for her team and the health regeneration for her team as well as that shield. Oh, Libic just ate a javelin and a chunking through right now. So you do see Febbervens reaching that stage in the game where Rabadon's death cap will start to hurt. Another one fires in onto Makathias. Should buy them enough time to pick up this tower. However, Kionan was caught from a dark binding. That is going to turn itself into a kill. Take fun, however, will be falling from the last auto attack of Rise. So Adamne secures that kill himself. Ku is now taking a bit of poke, but again, one for one trade. It's the mid laner for AD carry, but they get the tower, and that's the important part. And C9 are just going to push this and continue to do so. They're going to at least get uh, some position to take away the jungle and then look uh, to secure some more of the map away from Maus because with Ryze still alive, they can do that. They can be aggressive in that situation. They can, and they are looking to just push to the top lane. And I'm actually surprised the top lane's still standing for some reason. I thought they were both down. But Cloud9 now going to look to push it with Feather Van Ku and Libic. Well, not Ku and Libic, Ku and Voidal there. Got them mixed up there. Are still towards the top lane. They are going to be trying to steal away this blue buff for themselves. And uh, in the meanwhile, Feather Van keeping Kubon just a little bit busy. Yeah, top lane hadn't gone down because of the interactions around level 6 about Ryze, but Kuvon, oh, you're a little too far up. My goodness, that burst damage was insane. That's just an ultimate and a Q. And manages to go one on one. And the tower's not falling just yet. Will the creep be able to finish this one off? It's got two health remaining. Yes, it will. Good guy, Cannon Minion, comes to the rescue. Just managed to take that one down, and uh, I just had to skip forward to live because I desynced there, so I was just making sure I didn't check anything. Yeah, that's true. I need to keep ma making sure as well. It keeps going out of sync by about five seconds, which is really, really strange. Now it's paused for me. Yeah, it's paused for me as well. So it uh, looks like we're back to having uh, a couple of little issues with the spectator client. So oh, unfortunately, man. Uh, unfortunately, we're at this stage in the game. 14 kills to 16. The goal lead is in favor of Cloud9, and they do have a 6-2 and two rise, but a 6-3 and three Syndra on the other team uh, does a pretty darn good job as well of just deleting people from fights. Um, I'm going to try reconnecting again here, Stress, and I hope it works. As Fingers am I. Crossed. Apologies, guys. It's uh, unfortunately nothing that we can fix that easily, aside from, you know... Uh, pulse running down to uh, going over to wherever the servers are located and, and you know, Pulse working no, some stress. magic. Why would he do that, Stress? Because Pulse is good at fixing things. <laughs> have you never uh, have you never casted with Pulse when Pulse can just like fix a situation? Nice save. Nice no, save. I'm just saying Pulse can fix a situation. That's why. I could have picked Spud. I could have picked uh, Nature or anyone like that. Or Ruben, what? I guess. Nah, not Ruben. Our producer, who currently isn't too good at fixing things because he's having only, server problems. He can only so. just keep his own stream alive. How is he going to fix an entire server? 
<laughs> wow. That's that's it. Molly would fix it. Sorry, you guys True. can't hear the other half of this conversation that we're <laughs> currently having. So you must just think we're crazy talking to each other. But uh, yeah, well, it's not even loading for me anymore. I'm just stuck on a hundred percent for everybody. Same. Rip in peace, Spectorino. Oh dear. So oh at this, dear, at this oh point, dear. we have to just fill in time, and normally that goes to very strange, dark places with us anyway. I'm all out of sports references, so... Did maybe... the basketball like, exhaust that repertoire? I was going to say, we, we might... This could be like the equivalent of a timeout. Yeah. M Mouse Kits is just like on the sidelines calling timeout. Mm. Yeah, I have yeah. that too, Ruben. We've got a, another a little error, which... This is the, the error of terror, unfortunately, which plagued us for like three weeks. <laughs> the error which... of terror. Now, I wonder... I wonder, and I hope this isn't the case... One sec. I, th that normally happens when the game isn't active, but the members of Cloud9 are still in-game. So the game isn't over. Um, but unfortunately, I have been kicked uh, back to the client, so I've, I'm not even in spectator mode anymore. As have I, but luckily, uh, we keep the games open. So I'm loading up again. We'll see if we can get in. Yep. Uh, just stay patient with us here, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for understanding so far. I'm being asked to sing. There is no way that's going to happen, like ever. Why not? <laughs> because my voice sounds like a cat screaming. It's not very pleasant, unless you're into that sort of thing, in which case you should probably get yourself checked out. Wow. I can't even see you loading or spectating, no stress, so I can't follow you through. Uh, well, we'll see. I, I mean, I'm not loading in yet, so, well, I mean, I'm we're at 100% again, but... Hmm. Apologies that there's not too much going on here, guys, because, uh, God, now people want me to sing. Oops. Yeah, stress sing. Go on. No. You know I've... what we should do? What's um, up? You know, have you seen those videos online, which is, uh, you know, two people singing Frozen? Two people singing it, the, the songs from Frozen. Oh, God, I remember Vin Vince is only into, like, metal, so he probably doesn't like Disney songs. Hey, I like Skin Dread as well. That still kind of comes under I, that umbrella. I actually like all kinds of music. The, the only I know I'm going to catch a lot of heat from this because uh -oh. the Twitch crowd seems to uh -oh. be into dubstep and dance music. The only music I don't like is dubstep and dance music. It, I don't understand the appeal. I really don't. Such an old man. I, I am an old man, to be fair. I'm surprised I even use a PC. Yeah, you you commentate League by just drawing on, on paper. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, no. Okay, so I've got some... Good news, and I've got some bad news. I see the bad news But I need, first. I need to, I need to clarify. Okay. I need, I just got to clarify something because the game is over. Oh. Is the bad news? Well, that finished quickly. What the and hell? And who messaged me saying, "R.I.P. You just missed the best Duke of the Year." Oh my God! Where's the good news? Well, the good news is. For Cloud9 fans. <laughs> because I just messaged him to zero question mark and he replied with yes. So we'll get confirmation of it. And I don't actually need confirmation because I'm staring at a victory screen, so I don't even know why I'm asking for confirmation of this game. But uh it looks like Cloud9, and the bad news is we unfortunately can't bring you the rest of the game. That is very, very disappointing. For me, because that was an awesome game, but Cloud9 have won this series two games to zero. Right, so they will be progressing through to the finals, and they're going to face either Departed or Team Coast EU Unicorns of Love. I'm not sure who won that game, actually, because I think it was being played while we were I casting. I believe it was Unicorns of Love, actually, took the second game right. of that series. Uh, and an interesting thing to note about that Cloud9 Mouse game and how it ended... Odo Amni finished the game 12-2. and two. Ouch. 
on rice. And I think we left him at like six and two. We did, yeah. So he must have been on a tear the last few minutes. I was going to say that finished very quickly, but I guess if uh, if rice suddenly buckets himself six kills, that's probably going to happen. Uh, yeah, that that would happen. I don't know. Uh, just asking Ruben, our producer, if you had the victory screen, or would you like me to get that for you so you can show it on screen? Okay, I will get that for you guys to see it on stream, just so that you uh, can actually see a record of that. Just so that uh, you get the actual confirmation. But, unfortunately, that means we can't bring you the last game of the series, which is rather disappointing. It is, but the good news is, Stress, if the EUS hold, uh, servers hold up, there is another best of three on its way. So there is more League of Legends action coming up. I believe that scheduled... It was scheduled to start about 20 minutes ago, so it should be ready to go live fairly shortly. I love your optimism. I know. That's if the EUS servers don't die a horrible death. In which case, we probably won't be bringing more League of Legends. Hmm. Well, I think what we can do uh, is head to a break. <laughs> and then we can uh, see indeed what is going on. We can give you an update in a couple of minutes as well. Uh, as well as uh, a message from our friends at Esports Venture, but we're going to head to a break shortly now and be back in a couple of minutes with an update on what's going on. So stick with us here for the Chaos TV Challenger Series. We should be back with our second semi-final of the evening in just a couple of minutes. Take life too seriously Let the feeling come 